because we are kings and our words matter. See, God, that's why he chooses people that are nothing, that are down and out and picks them up and lifts them sky high because they have nothing to claim as their own. All glory belongs to God. All glory belongs. If you're ready to give God all the glory, my friend, God will lift you up so much, you know, dizzy heights that you can't even imagine. God will bless you and prosper you and lift you up to such heights that you would have in your wildest imagination never imagined something like that because doing that brings God the glory. Yes, the deer panted for the water so, so long it after this. You alone are my heart's desire, and I long to worship thee as the deer. As the deer panted for the water, so my soul longed after thee. You alone belong to worship you. God is full of jealous envy about us. He wants to. He wants to help us so much in our sinful tendencies. He wants to make sure that we win the battle. We wa he wants to make sure that to see us through. He wants to see us through and he wants to, he wants to make sure that we, are, we don't get defeated. He is so bent on it. Even more than us, he is so keen on that. All we got to do is we got to realize that he is there and he wants it. He will do it for us. He'll help us and reach out to him. He's already reaching out to us. He will help us. 
that's what it's all about so what is going to happen is the flesh going to win or the spirit going to win it all depends on you which side you take if you take the side of the flesh and decide to go with the flesh even god cannot stop it he can simply watch it that's it because you are made in the image and likeness of god you are told to think and decide and act but if you think and decide and act in line with the holy spirit and the word then he will take hold with you and he will make sure that you have the victory when you make that decision there is no power bigger than the holy spirit that can pull you on the other side because he is bigger than everything amen all right now this is how the holy spirit leads all these eight things i said about how the holy spirit leads not just by dreams visions prophecies and stuff like that's occasional special but what i'm saying is normal all the time for every child of god this is how the spirit of god leads now the question comes is he leading me like that how do i know that the holy spirit is leading me like that that's the question you have in your heart can i tell whether the holy spirit is leading me like that or not am i that person being led by the spirit of god that i am a child of god am i led like that by the spirit of god so that i can be sure today that i am a child of god well let me give you some practical signs that you can look for that will show you whether you are led by the spirit of god or not very simple signs just i'll just mention them quickly and you can tell whether these signs are evident in you the first sign is if a person is led by the spirit of god then that person will enjoy coming together with other believers to study the scriptures deeply in a setting of a church that means he will not neglect the assembling of believers together he is very keen on hearing the word and growing in the lord if a person is led by the spirit of god the worldly person does not have a desire for these things these things are even foolishness to him you know uh, they don't appreciate it it's like taking a blind man to botanical gardens you know you know and you tell him oh how beautiful this flower is and how wonderful this is and oh what we are look and he's just there he doesn't understand one thing out of what you're saying you know he has no appreciation for the beauty of the botanical garden because the simple fact of he cannot see right even if you manage to take a person to hear some great preaching or something like sometimes it fails because he has no he basically lacks any appreciation for spiritual things because he is not enlightened he doesn't desire it he has no appreciation for it he is like a spiritually blind person spiritual things cannot be understood by the natural mind this has to be understood with the help of the holy spirit so he is like a blind man sitting in a botanical garden he just has no appreciation for all of this but a believer is different he takes in every moment every thing is so important he feels like after the church is over he feels like boy i wish that they'd done it for a little, half an hour more you know i wish we could have this a little more you know that's the way he feels he can't have enough he's so hungry as the deer panteth for the water so my heart panteth after thee my god the psalmist said there is a panting there is a thirst there is a hunger in the believer's heart that identifies him as a true believer that shows that he is a true believer because it's not found in others if you're not a, if you're not a true believer you don't find it you may you may come because your wife comes you may come because your husband comes you may come because uh, you know somebody invited you here somebody dragged you by the ears or something like that you know or forced you or you may come because somebody told you that you won't go to heaven if you didn't come to church you know or god will break your hand or leg or something like that you may come for so many reasons but i'm talking about a true believer i'm not talking about any james and george and jones you know who's got a christian name i am talking about a believer who's had a transformation in his heart is born again and is led by the spirit of god how do we know that there is the holy spirit in him working something the holy spirit if he's in him he will give him the thirst and the hunger for the word of god he will hunger and thirst for the word of god that's a true sign very important sign 
for, we have seven o'clock service, nine o'clock service, eleven o'clock service. They tell me for the seven o'clock service, people come at five forty-five in the morning. Two three rows are full. It seems five forty-five here. What kind of a people are they? Why do they get up three thirty in the morning and get ready and come here? And some of them come fifty, sixty kilometers, seventy-five kilometers, hundred kilometers, travel here in the middle of the night and come to find a seat right in the front here so so eagerly they come and i tell you that's because they are the children of god they have a hunger and a thirst that drives them some of them say i can't wait till next sunday comes there is a thirst that is driving me and i tell you if you got the thirst you know see why are you not out there today many people are on the brunch having the breakfast and the lunch together you thought they you, they missed the breakfast no they're going for the brunch today <laughs> they're already into the plates but you are seated here you could have gone to so many parties you could have gone and danced uh, you know all last night and slept all morning and have a hangover you see <laughs> you didn't all night you slept so good so you can come to church and be awake and listen to the sermon why 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 are you here i tell you if you are here if you are here with a true heart if you are here because you want to be here i tell you that's because the holy spirit is in you that's why you are a child of god that's why you are here and if you are here regularly and if you come every week and if you just come so eagerly and wanting and coming openly and 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 just wanting to receive something then that means you are a child of god that identifies you as someone different from the world you are a child of god my friend secondly such a person who's led by the spirit of god he loves the company of the believers this is a good sign you love the company of the believers you know we've all had some bad company before but after you come and give your life to the lord then you find that that bad company is distasteful distasteful now you know it, it doesn't taste the same like before before you enjoyed their jokes and you enjoyed their pranks and you enjoyed all the stuff that they did and all the stuff that you did with them and all that but now you don't want to join with them in all those things they are your friends you work with them you see them and all of that but you don't want to go very deep into that you just want to you want to mix with another crowd you want another company if you desire the company of other believers who pray who talk about god share with you the things of god who encourage you with the word of god and pray with you and 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 lead you in the things of god and help you in the things of, if you have a desire to be with other believers and get together and talk about the things of god that's a good sign that you are a child of god that's why you're different that's the second thing we leave the old company and join the new company and the church is that kind of a company it's to give that company you know it's to give that kind of a support to people thirdly there is a desire in that person for god's glory people naturally don't desire god's glory they want their glory have you seen a natural man talk he says he always will talk like this well i want to achieve this i want to do this I want to be great. I want to be famous. I want to be well known. I am I want to be this and that. They are concerned about themselves. But a true believer is not so much concerned about him getting the glory. He is concerned about God getting the glory out of his life. It doesn't mean that he doesn't want to excel in everything and all. No, he wants to excel, but the thing is it's for God's glory. He says if I do well, if I succeed, if everybody thinks my work is great or my achievement is great then it will bring god the glory that's the way he thinks it's not about glorifying himself it is about glorifying god and he will turn around and give the glory to god you see see god called abraham he said i'll bless you see he didn't ask for blessing but god said i'll bless you i'm sure abraham was bewildered you know he said i didn't ask you nothing why are you telling me this but god says i'll bless you i'll make your name great Now Abraham didn't fast and pray saying Lord put my name in the papers so that it'll come in the front page you know <laughs> I believe really God wants to 
make our name great really see becoming great is not a not a big problem god wants it more than us but why do we want to become great that's the issue do we want to be great because the glory will belong to god or do we want to become great just so we can lap up all the glory and say hey i'm so great you know look at me i got a brain that's rare you know and and one in a million you know that type of thing you know <laughs> no see god that's why he chooses people that are nothing that are down and out and picks them up and lifts them sky high because they have nothing to claim as their own all glory belongs to god all glory belongs if you're ready to give god all the glory my friend god will lift you up so much you know dizzy heights that you can't even imagine god will bless you and prosper you and lift you up to such heights that you would have in your wildest imagination never imagined something like that because doing that brings god the glory now if you fail and if you become nothing and you you become useless you think god is proud about that all god's children being useless no good ineffective failures what a bad name god will get you know god so that's why i believe god wants to bless every person i am telling you you know don't, don't think well, he's preaching to famous people now you know a elite group of people that are very talented and gifted and that will become very famous and good. no i am preaching to everyone god wants to make your name great because his name will be glorified through that i don't ask me how he'll do it he'll do it that's the way it is but you set your heart right you live for the glory of god you give god the glory and god will lift you up see coming up in life is not an issue at all with god it's the, god can do it just like that just take you from zero to something you know numbers you cannot count our heart is the issue that's why in church we preach about the heart where is our heart what do we want in life what are we here for who are we trying to glorify that's the thing that's the issue and if your heart is right god will lift you sky high and make you something that you can never even imagine work on the heart fourthly a person will desire greater knowledge of jesus christ i don't need to say much about that we've already said a little bit fifthly that person will desire fellowship through prayer see prayer is not just giving a grocery list to god you know some people treat prayer like that you know when only when they're in trouble you'll find them you know writing letters very busily dear brother oh i appreciate your ministry you're so good because you prayed last time i became you know whatever you know and now i'm giving you uh, prayer point number 1 prayer point number 2 prayer point number 3 and 4 and 5 and 6 and big list and, and you pray for this and you set this right also and you never see them you know you know you know you they never god never hears from them again until they are in big trouble again <laughs> then they come with a new list prayer to them is just a emergency number calling business you know they call some evangelist some minister somebody for help and that's what prayer is all you pray brother because they don't believe in their prayer that god will hear their prayer their prayer will do anything they have, they don't believe because they don't pray you see but to a believer true believer prayer is something very special because it's not just going with a list to god to get something it is much more than that it is a time of pleasure and enjoyment of god's presence intimacy with him and fellowship with him he wants that prayer time when he does not have that prayer time then he misses it he wants more of it because he didn't have enough of it that's the way he looks at it that is a sign of a true believer sixthly is a person who is concerned about the lack of love for god and for jesus christ when he sees it in himself people love god god's children love god because they've realized how much god has done for them so their heart is full of thanksgiving and appreciation but we live in a world sometimes full of troubles and we get bombarded with troubles and like the bible says the cares of this world come and choke us right so we begin to pay attention to our family this that and problem this problem that problem we attend to this and that so we get all heaped with problems and we forget god 
<laughs> our love for God somewhat diminishes. Our prayer life diminishes. Our fellowship with God diminishes. Sometimes we let it drop, you know. And when that happens to a believer, see it happens to a believer sometimes because of the pressures of this life. It sometimes happens. When that happens, you can tell a believer because he reacts to it in this way, you know. He immediately feels a sadness in his heart that he is not right, that he is not like what he is before, that his first love is not there anymore and that he needs to go back to the way that he was before, that something is missing now. And that is caused by the Holy Spirit. He's led by the Spirit of God. He's a child of God. That's the way he's like that. And finally, let me say this. A person's reaction to sin, this is very important, identifies him as a believer. How does a person react to sin? How does a believer react to sin? Now, even an unbeliever is sad when he sins in some way. I've seen unbelievers that did a sin or two and messed up their marriage, messed up their family, messed up their business, their money, their health or something like that. They lost something. So they'll come and say, oh brother, I made this one mistake. And in the one mistake, I messed up the whole thing. I came to zero, to nothing. Because that one mistake I did and look how much I lost. And today, I just, I just, uh, I, I'm just so saddened by the whole thing. So he is sorrowful because of his sin. A sinner I'm talking about. Because he lost so much. But look at the way he's sorrowful. He's sorrowful in a selfish way because he lost money. He lost his wife. He lost his children. He lost this. He lost that. So he's sorrowful in that way. But a believer when he sins, maybe he lost so much and he feels for it. But that's not the big issue for him. When a believer sins, his main concern is, I have wronged against a God who has so loved me and honored me and blessed me. I've done something against him. And that is wrong. Let me just give you one example. The psalmist David in Psalm 51 is a psalm of his repentance. He prays after he sinned, right? In that prayer he says, against thee and against thee only have I sinned. Now he could have said, Lord, I, I sinned against that innocent woman. I should not have done that. It's a wrong against a woman. And all the women's associations will be happy. <laughs> and it's right also, right? It's right also. It's a wrong against a woman. A king, you know, when he says, come, you better go. You know, what will she do? You know, it's a wrong against woman. He could have said that, but he never said that. He didn't say, Lord, I've wronged a woman. No. Secondly, he could have said, Lord, I've wronged her husband. I've killed him. He's a man that was fighting in battle for me, sincere, faithful to me. He's not, never done anything wrong to me, but I killed him. What a treacherous thing to do. I've done wrong. I've wronged a man who's better than that woman, really. Wronged a man, innocent man. It would have been right, but he never said that. He could have said, Lord, I've wronged the people who put so much trust in me, given their life in my hands as a king. Battle is going on, serious issues going on. I should have been there led the people they trusted me and I've in the during a very important time I did something like this and I failed the people I've sinned against the people who trusted me that would have been right but he didn't say that he says against you and against you only have I sinned that's a believer see that's why God said he's a man after my own heart God said because when it came down to everything he acknowledged that his sin was not against all these others, even though it was, primarily it is an issue between him and God. God loved him so much. He took a boy who was taking care of few sheep, the Bible says. He was not even good enough to have a big sheep, you know, a big, uh, what do you call it, sheep fold to take care of, right? He was not even big time sheep fold fellow, shepherd, you know. Small time guy, few sheep the Bible says. Some, from such lowly beginnings, God took him and elevated him to be a king, made him very wealthy, made him very blessed and gave him so much success, no enemy could stand before him, honored him and blessed him. And now he realizes, I have done wrong against God who loved me so much and exalted me so much and blessed me so much, I have done, done wrong. That is what a believer's reaction against sin is. 
if you have that kind of a reaction then that means you are a child of god amen you love to go to church you long to hear the word of god you love to pray you love the fellowship of the believers you love god that's a sure indication that you are a child of god rejoice in the fact god loves you you are his child he loves you in a very special way shall we all stand together Let's clap our hands the bible says enter his gates with thanksgiving enter his gates with thanksgiving come into his courts with praise Enter his presence rejoicing Singing great and mighty is his name Praise him with the sound of the trumpet Praise him with the timbrel and harp And every creature in heaven and earth Lift the sound of praise Pray with all their heart Endurance.